this is going to be a really fun video because I'm going to be doing a complete teardown of the Blue Eddy AC200L. I haven't seen it anywhere, so I thought it would be interesting to look at the components inside of it. Plus, this is one of my all-time favorite 2,400-watt power stations. It's got 2,048 watt-hours of capacity. And if you're familiar with my channel, I did a full review on it. You can check that out right up here. But I've never had the opportunity to open it up and look at the components on the inside of it. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. I do want to disclose that this is for entertainment purposes only. And I do not recommend tearing down any portable power station or working on electricity if you're not comfortable or not a certified or licensed electrician. This is something that I'm doing to bring you entertainment and hopefully you find value in the video as far as looking at the internals of the AC200L. Kind of see how everything's just popping off now. So we just got the cover off the front. I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the back. And I'm not gonna do a step-by-step teardown because I think it's gonna bore you to death. I wanna put you on a time lapse, let you listen to some music for just a second. We'll get it tore down, and then I'll talk about the internal components. Here's something interesting. It's a USB port at the top. So that's probably for service. If you have to send your Blue Eddy in for service, for diagnostics, they could probably plug the diagnostics tool in here and find out what's wrong with your uh, power station. I'm not 100% positive that's what it is. Typically, that's what the USB port is if it's not on the outside of a unit. Let's take a look at this as the inverter sits here. Here's where your solar hooks up. These were the USB ports that plugged in up here. I've got those disconnected. We have our battery connectors coming in right here. And I've got everything else basically disconnected, but we do have load wires here. So that would go to these right here. And the AC outlets, all four of these and the 30 amp actually share this board here because you can see the ground, the protective ground here, the neutral, and then our lead wire right here going into the 30 amp and into this. Then those wires come out here and connect into this circuit board where these wires connected into that as well. And the wires on this side is the grid. So you have your neutral, your lead, and your protective ground that come in from down here. It does appear that there is another circuit board down there and hopefully we'll get there in just a little bit. And mounted here on the side of the batteries was the BMS. The batteries connect here, and then the output from the board comes out right here. But that's what the BMS looks like. And if we take our voltage meter and make contact to the terminals, we've got 52.8 volts.
And this is about as far as I'm going to make it with the cells themselves. Looks like they're using the 3.2 volts. I uh, wish I can get a scan on that, but they're inside of this housing and I can't figure out how to get this circuit board off without causing damage. We can lift right here, but I'm going to end up breaking that circuit board. And I don't want to do that. I don't cause any damage to the unit. It is rather expensive and I'd rather not do that because it could be put back together and used just like new. But that's the battery pack that's inside the AC200L. Now that I've gotten this far, I wanna discuss what all the different components are that we're looking at here. And I'm gonna start with the plastics because those are the most obvious. And let's start with the front and back housing covers. These are the first two items that I had to remove to take the uh, power station apart. We'll come back to this in just a second. This is the bottom housing. I don't want that to drop. It does have that circuit board that connects to your AC input, your PV input, and your battery expansion pack, and the circuit protector. And I guess I could have probably taken that out, but I didn't find that it was necessary. So I just want to kind of discuss it because it's just the uh, side circuit board. There's a couple other items up here that are similar to that. I took them out because I had to get them out of the way to get to the battery pack. And that plate that I took out is an anti-interference shielding plate that sets right here and it protects interference between the bottom half of this power station, which is the battery uh, pack and all of the components up on top. This is just a shielding plate. This is just a cover that goes over some of the components when we're taking it apart. And then we have the bottom plastics and the top plastics. Here are the handles, some various wires that I had to take off to get some of these components out. All of the bolts, the battery connectors, which are, hopefully you can see this, pure copper tin plated. And they do have this little crimp right there that allows for movement if this has to move around, if it gets too hot, this provides relief. So this is a relief crimp. And that's really nice to see because sometimes you buy like cheaper inverters. It doesn't have that crimp. These are not pure copper tin plated. And that just brings the quality down either in those inverters or the components that come with the inverters or even the uh, power stations that you buy. So it's really nice to see that they're using quality connectors. And I think we're all familiar with the fans. The circuit boards that we have left over here, this is a charging filter board. This is an output uh, filter board. And this is our BMS. I do wanna come back to this a little bit later and kind of give you a better uh, shot of what we're looking at here. And that's the control board that allows us to control the power station. It actually powers the display, all of our buttons here, even the on and off button is all connected to that uh, control board. This circuit board is basically uh, connected for these outlets right here and the actual 30 amp plug. And this is the main circuit board for the inverter. So if you've ever wondered how the uh, electricity is actually converted from the battery to your wall unit or to an outlet, it's using this board here to do that. And this one is capable of up to 2,400 watts continuous output. Now we do have the battery pack and the BMS that I wanna to return to and talk about, um, but I thought it was pretty cool to actually see what the inverter looks like inside the AC200L. I wanted to come back to the BMS because I think it's important to talk about it. Not everybody understands what the BMS actually is. That is your battery management system. And this circuit board protects this battery pack from low voltage, over voltage, all sorts of different types of scenarios that could cause damage to your cells of your battery. And we don't want that to happen. That's why it's important to have a good BMS installed into any power station that you get. So I did try to find out exactly who makes this um, BMS. There's a QR code right here that I tried to scan. I couldn't get anything out of it. I do see that Blue Eddy 
has their stamp right here. I'm not sure if they personally uh, manufacture this BMS, but in my testing, this thing worked perfectly. So I know that it's a good BMS because it functioned just like it was supposed to. And really there hasn't been any known problems with the AC200L and the BMS. Next, I do want to talk about the battery pack. This is a 51.2 volt battery that has the capacity of 2,048 watt hours. That's over two kilowatt hours of capacity in this small footprint. Now, Blue Eddy does have a Elite 200 that uses prismatic cells that would even create this same capacity at a smaller footprint because these are cylindrical cells. They have the circular design that uses a little bit more space. So they even have a battery that's smaller with the same capacity out of that Elite 200. And maybe someday I'll tear that apart and show you guys. But each one of these cells are 3.2 volts at four amp hours. Now I wanna explain how they get to 51 volts uh, out of this or 51.2 volts. So we have 80 cells at the top, 80 cells at the bottom. Then they take 16 cells right here. So there's eight cells in each one of these rows. They put those together in series to create a 51.2 volt battery at four amp hours. And they do that five times in this top, five times in the bottom. So then they wire those into a uh, parallel to create a, a 51.2 volt battery with the capacity of 40 amp hours. So this is a 40 amp hour battery at 51.2 volts, giving us the capacity of 2,048 watt hours. And that's the simple design of how all batteries are basically put together. And then when we put the battery pack with all of the technology in their circuitry that we have here, and we even have a circuit board on the side here and some temperature sensors that go in to help protect the battery, there's no way that you can build this as a DIYer and save money. It just can't. Not to have all of those uh, security functions. When you're buying from a quality manufacturer like Blue Eddy, uh, they're one of the best in the business. And just tearing this down and verifying some of the things that they use, I truly believe that there's no way of even thinking about uh, building a DIY power station and having all of these security functions and safety functions that these systems have in them. I don't think there is a better value than power stations if you're looking to get into solar and Blue Eddy is one of the best in the business of that. So be sure to check them out if that's what you're interested in is power stations. If you're looking at larger systems, they do have ESS systems that you may be interested in. I have one installed in my garage for my house and I have a full video on that as well if you'd like to check that out. But hopefully someday I'm able to take a look at those prismatic cells to see how much space that we're gonna actually save compared to the cylindrical cells that we have here in front of us. And don't get me wrong, I love to DIY things. I've done it all of my life. I installed a complete solar system on top of this shop. I'm working on another solar system that I'm installing an in-ground mount and I finished everything that's inside of this shop. I wired it, I shared that with you guys. I'm gonna share the new solar system with you all as well. I love to DIY, that's what I do best. Uh, but when I do that, I try to do it as professionally as possible as well. Then that comes with an added cost of just trying to throw something together. And that's my a point on this, is if you were trying to build this professionally, buy these casings, buy the batteries, buy the protective plates, buy the circuit boards, buy all the connectors, buy the sensors, get the inverter, get the control panel, get the casing. There is a lot involved in it. And that's just my perspective that from your time spent and the money that it's gonna to take to put all the components together and then have the footprint of what a quality manufacturer may be able to offer you, I just don't think it's worth doing a DIY system. So once you find a manufacturer like Blue Eddy and they give you really high quality products, I just think it's the best way to go. Hopefully I was able to keep you entertained throughout this video and possibly even teach you something about these portable power stations. If I was able to accomplish that, be sure to leave a comment below. Let me know that I did an okay job and I hope to catch you in my next one.